So far, Series 10 has followed a very traditional structure, and Thin Ice is no exception to that. You start with a companion introducing adventure in modern day, then a trip to the future with some high concept science fictioning, and then you balance that out with a period piece with monsters. Thin Ice takes place in the final London Frost Fair of 1814, with the Thames having frozen over and festivities taking place on the ice. The Doctor and Bill have arrived here by accident, the TARDIS having missed its target, but the Doctor has never been known to pass up a party, even if they often end up being parties with flesh-eating monsters roaming around. There's something under the ice, something grabbing people when nobody else is looking, and what it's doing with those people could warp history into something unrecognizable. It's just as simple of a plot as the last episode. You have your question, where have all the colonists gone, what's under the ice? You have your answer, the robots did a thing, there was a monster under the ice. And you have your response, how do we deal with the robots, how do we deal with the monster? But unlike Smile that opted had just leave the mystery as is, Thin Ice actually used the mystery to hang things like ideas and themes and stuff usually by asking questions of its settings. The emoji robots in Smile were an interesting visual, but they didn't evoke any questions in the characters or the audience. The episode could have been a discussion about communication, about the supposed universal understandings of human expression, or, if you're a crap writer, about what a future built by millennial attitudes might look like. In contrast, Thin Ice has a lot of ideas that presents them pretty directly, even though it lacks any images as eye-catching, i.e. marketable, as the emoji robots. It asks questions about the implications of time travel, the racial and class politics of the early 19th century, and how they contrast to the politics of today, and, perhaps most relevant to modern discourse, when it's most appropriate to punch racists in the face. There's usually some pushback when Doctor Who gets overtly political, Something that it's been doing since the beginning, let's not pretend otherwise. But for me, these are the episodes to pay attention to because they offer a bit of a compass to show where the priorities of the people behind the show are at that given moment. For example, one of the major discussion points raised in Thin Ice is if it's safe for Bill, a black woman, to travel into the past. That exact same question is also raised in the Gareth Roberts penned episode The Shakespeare Code with the Tenth Doctor and Martha Jones. But that episode basically says, yeah, don't worry about it. We'll just ignore the implications. Now let's team up with William Shakespeare and beat up some witches. Racial politics were not a priority over the adventure during that period in the show. Here, Bill's race is very much an important factor, and it does cause complications that need to be addressed. Racial politics are a much greater priority for the show than it was a decade ago. To paraphrase Louis C.K., time travel is a white privilege. These are politics, and if you don't like politics in your media, well, stop watching media because it's all full of politics. The only significant difference here is that it's politics overtly expressed through dialogue and action. It's text instead of subtext. You don't have to make an effort to recognize it, and therefore you can't stick your fingers in your ears to ignore it. There is a distressing amount of people who willfully refuse to engage with any works that express political ideals, especially more liberal ideals in the realms of sexism and racism. And it's not a surprise that reactions to this episode in some places of the internet are pretty shitty. While I would love to say that my stance on the issues don't reflect my opinion on the episode, and that I would find some enjoyment out of a story where the politics were reversed, the truth of the matter is that these episodes align well enough with my own leanings on these topics to add to my enjoyment of the episode. And if this story didn't have the doctor bringing up how we whitewash history and how Jesus wasn't white, a small but defining moment, the episode would be lesser for it. You may find it pandering. I find it refreshing. Of course, saying racism is bad will only get you so far if the plot doesn't support itself, and thankfully Thin Ice is a very well-structured mystery. Being a Doctor Who writer means having a lot of interesting ideas, but between this and Sarah Dollard's previous script, Face the Raven, which I also liked, it's clear that she has a rare talent among Doctor Who writers, knowing when to stop. Both Face the Raven and Thin Ice have a lot of big ideas and set pieces that finish up right before they overstay their welcome. Bill sees someone killed for the first time in her life and has a strong reaction to it, and we stay with this idea until we've covered all the bases we need to, and then we move on. The Doctor and Bill go scuba diving under the ice, and we stay with this moment until we get one good gag and an important piece of information. 
The doctor and Bill infiltrate a work yard and talk their way past the foreman, and we stay with these jokes until just before they get old. It may seem simple, but being able to recognize the value of a certain moment and not extending the moment past that value takes a certain level of experience and talent. And while some of it may well have been some tight editing, nothing really feels missing. So I trust patterns and believe that Sarah Dollard is just that good at time management. Okay, maybe good at time management is not the sexiest compliment you can give a writer, but I'm genuinely impressed and really hope Dollard will be sticking with the show with the transition into the Chibnall era. The only major criticism I can direct at Thin Ice is that it's betrayed a bit by its budget. The Frost Fair is hyped up as this really wonderful time, a magical moment in history, but in reality, it's six tenths and a dozen extras. Rarely does the episode fool you into believing that you're seeing Regency London and not a film studio. The monster is entirely CGI circa 2006 and is thus rarely seen, and I cheekily wonder if the setting was chosen because the BBC always has a lot of Dickensian costumes laying around. But that is a minor, minor issue for me. I can easily forgive things being a bit under budget when it's a well-crafted and discussion-provoking story like this. I enjoyed Thin Ice immensely. It currently stands as my favorite story of series 10 and is going to go into the rewatch with semi-regularity list. This does seem to end the direct continuity thing they were doing with these first three episodes, which will make the transition between episode 3 and episode 4 the first major break in the mini-series feel of series 10. Will that affect the quality of the stories in any way? We'll find out next week with Knock Knock. <laughs>